Brian, it's unbelievable to think that we're almost up to the anniversary, the 30th anniversary of the fantastic game with Middlesbrough. Yes, you're not, you haven't aged a lot, have you, really? Um, yes, it, was, it brings back memories of a very happy game a very happy occasion and uh, during the lead up to that of course we played some uh, competent sides and one has got to remember that we wouldn't have played Middlesbrough if we hadn't have beaten Marlowe 1-0 in the 86th minute or whatever it was for a Roger Day goal um, and Bert Crump the secretary of the day forgot to apply for our uh, uh, the opportunity to be, uh, what is it? Uh, exempted from exempted, the... Exempted, I was trying to remember the Football Association terminology. And uh, as a result, we, we, we won 1-0 and it's, it sort of started uh, a memorable season. I mean, it was incredible when we got reached the Middlesbrough game. We had two games with Bournemouth. I think we played something like seven or eight games before we played there. Yes, we did. And uh, the Bournemouth game was terrific, really, because we should have beaten them 5-0. I mean, Kevin Charlton, the goalkeeper, was absolutely magnificent. And 5-0 wouldn't have been a, a, a disgrace that day. We did play well. And when we went for the draw, I mean, we knew who we were going to play. And the other thing that was so different to nowadays, we went on the following Tuesday. So we, the hype was still with us. We don't have to wait now for police to tell us when we can play. Mm. And so it was exciting. And we knew we were going to play Middlesbrough. And when we played uh, Bournemouth, they didn't give us the respect they should have done. No, I mean, I that was a tremendous Tuesday night, wasn't it? It was one of oh. the real highlights of the club's history, that win at Dinkle. It was. Mm. I, got, I got excited that night. Mm. Um, it was exciting because uh, they didn't give us the respect. The goalkeeper went off at a half time. They were leading, and uh, we took the uh, lead eventually, and we held on, and we were the better side. Mm. And uh, they, were, they were absolutely numbed. They were as numbed as when Wimbledon were numbed when we beat them on our famous sort of trip when we finished in the semi-final against Liverpool. Hmm. And it's very interesting when you numb a club. We numbed the club uh, at uh, Bournemouth and then we went on and everyone knew playing Middlesbrough. I mean, and they were top of the first division. I had the audacity the week before to go and spy on them. And I went to Goodison Park and... Um, I'm having a cup of tea in the guest room and of course I, I knew Jack Charlton well and he saw me and he said, Brian, come over, have a cup of tea, have a drink. Um, totally embarrassing, really. I mean, what am I doing there? <laughs> anyway, we won, didn't we? And then something not a lot of people know, on my way back, I got to the station in Liverpool, Lime Street, and I got on the train and I saw the Watford team were on the train and Mike Keane was the manager who eventually, of course, became manager of Wickham. And so, after I'd sort of made, completed my notes about the game, uh, the uh, Middlesbrough game, I, um, I went down to see Mike, and he was sitting with his chairman, and he said, have you ever met um, my chairman? So I said, no. And uh, it was Elton John. And I didn't know Elton John from Tom Smith. <laughs> and uh, I've watched his progress, he's done quite well, yeah. the young lad, and made a bob at him. But it's very interesting when you look back at football leads, you know, it's got tentacles that go out to other things. Mm. And Elton John, in all seriousness, was just, was just, you're just amazed how well we'd done. And he, he, he didn't want to talk about Watford, he wanted to talk about Wickham. And, and he wanted to spend money, and Mike Keane wouldn't spend any money. And he said, I'm not wasting your, your, your money, Mr Chairman. When he became the Wickham Chairman, he wanted to waste mine. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, and we played anything like we wouldn't have won. There's no way we could win because we've got inf superior players. Mm. But on the day, anything can happen, and it nearly did. And really, I thought we were a better team at Lokes Park. It was a great occasion and um, uh, lives in the memory of the Wigan people. Again, very fortunate to play the game on our own ground. When I look at what's happening at Yedding, you know, at the moment, it's appalling. Uh, really, that you're allowed to enter the Football Association Challenge Cup, the most coveted competition in the world of sport, because nowhere else do you have David and Goliath like you have in this in this competition. And even if the ground will only hold a thousand people, there should be playing there in front of a thousand people. To move it for financial reasons and p police are telling us what to do is absolutely wrong. It's not within the spirit of sport. I must just refer to the game again because I will never forget the one thing that sticks in my mind about the, the, the game at Lokes Park was with 20 minutes to go, Middlesbrough was shouting out, let's shut up shop. Yes, they were. And of course, they, they, had, a, they had a player called Silness, uh, I think it was, in the middle of the field and in the middle of the park. And he had a, a very competitive game with, with Terry Reardon. Mm. And Terry Reardon won the day without any doubts at all. Mm. And uh, they were getting very frustrated. And to say when Jack afterwards said they couldn't cope with the slope, you know, the pitch and so on, which is absolutely untrue because they'd actually trained on a hillside in Durham. Mm. Uh, whilst we got 11 foot 6, I think, this is from side yeah, to side at Lokes Park, uh, the hillside was a bit... Uh, so they trained on too great a slope, I think. That was their problem. <laughs> the replay, of course, went to Ayrsham and what a performance we put up there. Mm. And finally, they nicked it in the 89th minute. Yes, uh, again, again, a great performance. Mm. Uh, a great performance because we... Uh, we knew what we were doing and we, we knew it was a moment of our life we just had to hang on and we hoped that they might make a mistake um, but they were the better side on that day and they were overwhelming us towards the end mm. and I again I didn't really want us to be defeated 6-0 in extra time and they scored in the 89th minute and yeah, it, was a, it was an amazing performance but what will ring in my uh, in my memory I think will always be the, the, uh, the applause uh, and the standing ovation we got from the Middlesbrough supporters and indeed the players. I mean, <coughs> after the game I, I had a number of amazing letters from pensioners and, and children in that area uh, who wanted to know about Wigan Wanderers. So you never know what things lead to in sport. Wonderful. Well, it seems a terrific long time ago when you look at it, Brian, but to my note to me and you, it seems like yesterday. Oh, no, it was week last Friday. Yeah. <laughs> but it was good. It was good, and it will always remain with us, always remain with us as far as the team is concerned as well, the players. Because that, you know, you talk about players, and uh, Everton are doing it at the moment. They've just lost a star, and their team spirit's taken them to the second place in the Premier League. And it's about team spirit. We had great team spirit at that time. Absolutely wonderful team spirit. No substitutes and mother about, no money changing hands, nothing like this. It was just a group of players wanted to achieve, and their ambition was to do as well as they could, and they did. And they were a credit to the club and the credit to the town.